Joining us now to break down the day's top headlines and where we stand coming out of the first presidential debate is Cassie Smedley, the Deputy Communications Director for the Republican National Committee. So Cassie, the big night was on Tuesday. I know that a lot of weight was put into that by both parties, hoping that it could be a game changer or an opportunity to contra contrast these two ideologies. So I want to ask you, did the Republican Party get what it was looking for coming out of Tuesday? Yeah, it was definitely a good start as we for the first of uh, of the series of debates. But this was the first time that most Americans got to hear from Joe Biden for any real amount of time. And to have the president push him on these issues that he has so far not given an answer to. And even if the answer was that he was not willing to answer, that was informative to American voters, not willing to answer on packing the courts, lying about his position on the Green New Deal, not willing to admit that he's going to raise taxes for 80 percent of Americans. Those are all things that President Bush, that the president was able to push him on, um, which was a significant step in the right direction. I think um, only the start of so much more that we're going to see from from the president in the debates to come. And Cassie, I noticed that President Trump, I think it was a strategy of his to come in, be an aggressor and to some degree a disruptor as well. Because, for example, going into the night, uh, we were talking about what would be the soundbite that Joe Biden would take away to really introduce himself to the rest of the country, people who may not pay attention to politics. And coming out of it, I don't think Joe Biden got the opportunity to in introduce himself to a lot of people who maybe don't pay attention to politics too much. He didn't get to lay out his policies or anything like that. And it seems like that might have been actually the strategy by the Trump campaign. So I think when we look at that as well, do you think that Joe Biden had a hard time getting out his message that would be crucial to a lot of independent voters? Yeah, without a doubt, because every single time that he tried to revert back to the canned poll tested talking points, President Trump didn't let him get away with it. And that is a first for Joe Biden, because to the extent that he's talked at all this campaign, it's been to allies and media that um, aren't willing to really push him on these issues, aren't willing to call him out on his 47 years of failed record. And I do think that was the highest moment in President Trump's evening when he said, I've done more for the country in 47 months than you have done in 47 years. That's a very tangible vision that he gave to the American voters. And I would say for Joe Biden, the most telling moment of his night was when President Trump pushed him to name one law enforcement group that has endorsed him, and it was crickets. That's all you need to know about what law and order is going to look like should Joe Biden reach the presidency. I also noticed that moment, and it was surprising to me, along with actually the Hunter Biden allegations, because Joe Biden should have known that those were going to come up, but he didn't have a rebuttal. I thought that was very interesting. I don't know if it was maybe a lack of preparation or the idea that maybe he wasn't prepared, uh, expecting those questions, I should say, but it was something that I was almost positive President Trump was going to bring up, and he didn't have a good canned response that you know that they would be practicing behind the scenes. But I want to touch on that as well, because when we were talking about that law enforcement exchange that you mentioned between President Trump and Joe Biden, Chris Wallace saved Joe Biden in that situation. He immediately stepped in, didn't allow that exchange to continue, which is the reason why many people even tune into these debates. And now we're hearing that there might be changes coming, perhaps the moderator having the ability to mute the microphones or maybe changing up the format. What does that tell you about the way things went on Tuesday night? Yeah, it says that they didn't go very well for Joe Biden. And here again, you have the media and the Beltway friendlies trying to change the rules for him, trying to protect him, trying to help him. The, the candidates and the campaigns agreed to the terms for these debates. That's what should be on the table going forward. If they both agree to change the terms, that can be under consideration. But the debate commission should not be able to do it without the input and the agreement from both campaigns. Now, that said, the American people need to hear from Joe Biden. And the moderators protecting him, the debate rules protecting him, only further hurts the American people's ability to make an informed voting decision. And so if at this point, if they don't know how they want to vote because they haven't heard Joe Biden's position, that's Joe Biden's fault and nobody else should bail him out of that. And, you know, I heard a conversation this morning that was kind of interesting to me, actually, between Megyn Kelly and Hugh Hewitt on her podcast. And she was saying that the first debate might actually be setting up the second debate in the sense that Biden is now going to be expecting President Trump to interrupt him. But perhaps if President Trump just takes a step back and lets Biden to really explain his issues in the way that he wants to, that might be the disadvantage. I mean, we've seen uh, Joe Biden, for example, go on these long rants and really get lost in his own thoughts. That's when he has the gaffes, the fumbles, things of that nature. So perhaps it's not just about the first debate, but winning the series of debates, because what we're seeing right now is very similar to what happened in 2016. The initial uh, debate, everyone said that President Trump lost. In fact, back in 2016, they said that he lost all of the debates, and we know how that turned out. So I think it's about the big picture, not just the first debate. I think that's what a lot of people have to keep in mind. But Cassie Smedley, I really appreciate you coming on the program tonight, breaking down that debate. Thank you.